My name is Garen Phillips and today I'm going to be showing you how I took this 3D drawing and turned it into this. And yes, it is metal. Okay, so the reason I'm able to take this uh, 3D drawing and turn it into a metal part is because I have access to things that most normal people don't. Things like these. <laughs> All of that is what makes up a aluminum foundry in CNC shop. But there's one machine in particular that enables me to make pretty much whatever I want. And that machine is the 3D printer. I'll go into more detail later on how the printer works, but for now I need to make the tooling, which is uh, what will be used to make the patterns, molds, and core boxes that will be used in the manufacturing process of the hammer. Now if you don't know what any of that is, don't worry, by the end of the video you'll understand. Drawing the hammer itself took me about an hour, hour and a half, and uh, to draw the tooling and the core box, uh, it took me about three hours. Now that I had all the tooling done, I had to cut it up into sections because our 3D printer can, is only capable of printing a size of 10 by 10 by 12 inches. And what you're seeing right now is the uh, 3D printer's program that is actually taking the parts that I've drawn, cutting them up into uh, layers that are about 0.01 inch thick, and it uh, writes the tool path for the printer from top to bottom, and then sends it to the printer and prints. The blue material you see is the uh, parts that I've drawn and are printing out, and the black material is support that the printer calculates and lays down to support any material that might fall over because when it's uh, laid down the plastic is about 300 degrees. Uh, once the uh, part is done printing and uh, cooled off a bit, I just have to take the uh, parts, break them off the pallet and stick them in a cushion that will dissolve away structure material and I'm left with just the parts. Then I wash the solution off and dry the parts and then I assemble them. Now while I'm off on the background assembling, I'd like to explain how patterns, molds, core boxes, and cores work. In order to make a casting, you need a mold. In order to make a mold, you need a pattern. The parts that I'm assembling right now will be placed on a board and will make a mold similar to this. In order to make the part hollow to reduce weight, we need to make a core. The core will be made out of the core box and will be placed inside the mold. When the metal flows into the mold, it will uh, harden around the core. Once you pull the part out of the mold, you just have to knock the core out, which is made of sand, and you're left with a hollow part. Now I need to travel across town to our green sand foundry. I'm also really into cars, if you couldn't tell. Um, I'm currently designing a uh, prototype valve train for combustion engine that I've been working on for about three, four years now since I was 18. And unfortunately, I can't go into any detail on it right now, but I will be making videos on the entire process of uh, prototyping and designing it. Um, my company that I work for actually is a uh, two companies. One is Phillips Patterns and Castings, which started back in 1947 by my grandfather. Uh, it was actually just him working in a chicken coop, hand-cutting patterns for the local foundries in the area. And since then, everything you've seen in this video so far is what it's become. Our other company is Diamond P Industries, which is our storefront for all the parts that we manufacture ourselves. We are a 100% American-made manufacturing company. We don't outsource anything overseas. Uh, we try to do everything in-house, aside from heat treating and certain coating processes. But enough about that. Back to making this hammer. So I've already taken the parts that I printed, assembled them, mounted them to a board, made the pattern, made the core box, and I'm now taking the core box up to our air set molding section, where I will make the cores. I'd like to stop the video real quick and state uh, that what you're about to watch is me making the molds from the 
pattern, but this pattern was actually intended for green sand mold line, and our uh, hopper for our green sand was down the day that I made this video, so instead of waiting, I just uh, made a couple molds in air set, and I'll explain the differences after the parts been cast. And how this works is the sand is actually a silica sand that's mixed with a chemical resin and an activator, and it hardens in air, thus the name air set. The torch is being used to burn the chemicals in the uh, sand, and what this does is adds a thin layer of carbon on the mold that makes the metal flow in a bit better and a much smoother finish on the casting. Now I just need to take the mold down to the pouring deck, pour the metal in it, and wait for it to cool. Don't try this at home. Seriously, don't try this at home. Everyone you see in this video is a professional, and has been doing this for a very long time. The metal they're pulling in the mold is 319, and it's an aluminum alloy. It's not the strongest of the metals that we pour, uh, but it'll be entering the mold at about 1450, and it'll take a few hours to cool because the air set sand uh, holds heat much longer than our green sand mold. Alright, so here's the finished product. After about three weeks, uh, when I started on this design, I now have a finished part. Still a little hot, so I can't uh, grab it or move it around too much. The uh, I can't knock the core out yet because the uh, sand has to cool down to temperature before it'll be able to shake out. The uh, looks like all the uh, engraved picked up pretty well. Now, what I was saying earlier about the difference between green sand and air set molding is that air set can hold much better definition of smaller uh, engravings because the sand is bonded with a chemical instead of green sand where it's bonded by clay and water. I don't know when these parts will be cast in green sand if they'll have as good a definition in the engravings. Alright, so I got the uh, gating cut off and the uh, risers and everything. Now I just need to clean off the uh, parting lines and uh, fit the cap and paint it. Now if you find this stuff cool, manufacturing processes, how stuff's made, engineering, CAD design, metallurgy, then subscribe to my channel. I'll be making a lot more videos, going a lot more in depth on the different processes and how things are made throughout our foundry. With the knowledge I have and the access to technology and machines that most don't, I can pretty much make whatever I want with only limitations being t money and time. I'll be taking suggestions on the next thing I'm going to be designing, so add me on Facebook if you like. You'll be able to see all the current things I'm working on. The link is in the description. But I'll also need your help to do so. While I'm able to make these videos and upload them to the internet, it still costs my company money to pay me during the hours that I do this work. So if you wish to see more videos, see more parts produced, just visit our website. The more people that uh, see my videos and the more people that visit our website, the more things I'll be able to create and upload. Alright, so the hammer's done. Uh, there's one last thing I'm going to do to it. I'm going to throw it in the shot blast, which the shot blast is that thing, and what it does is shoot it with shot. And by shot, I mean this stuff. <coughs> now, it may look like sand, but it's actually uh, extremely small beads of uh, steel that hits it at really high speed and gives it a uh, good finish. Uh, one more thing I'd like to show is uh, this hammer is pretty, uh, pretty heavy. I'll actually take it over the scale real quick and weigh it. Wall thickness on this thing between the uh, inside wall and outside wall right here is about an inch, inch and a quarter. So it looks like it is uh, 9.65 pounds. Alright, so finished with the hammer. It's all done and painted. <clears throat> I was going to finish the video with uh, smashing some stuff to show how strong it is. Uh, unfortunately, I ran out of time. Um, earlier when I said I was into cars, I kind of undersold that. That over there is a 750 horse alcohol Camaro. Runs a quarter mile in 
nine and a half seconds. If you'd like to see an in-car pass of it, click on the link that's about to pop up.